They, the high-powered couple, married and rich. She, the PTA president and grade school volunteer. It's a David and Goliath story if ever there was one, but this version peppered with doses of torment and revenge. I've never seen a case where um, people intentionally went after someone to such a degree and such a vicious attack on someone's character. Kent and Jill Easter were living the California dream. They had everything. Kent was working at a big law firm, making a lot of money, Stanford educated. Jill went to Bolt Law School, not practicing at the time. Kelly Peters, middle-class wife and mother, practically a second mom to the grade schoolers at Plaza Vista Elementary in upscale Irvine, California. She does a lot, so much for our school. Kelly prided herself on her after-school arts and enrichment program. At the end of the day, Kelly made sure the kids were back in the hands of their parents waiting outside. What I do is I match them up with their parents. So when I have an extra child, I stand there and wait for the parent to show up. One February afternoon, Kelly was informed that a parent was outside waiting to speak to her. That parent was Jill Easter, and she was irate, accusing Kelly of neglecting her six-year-old son. He had apparently lagged behind inside the school and missed the after-school lineup. I don't know why he didn't line up. Maybe he was walking slower than the rest of the kids. The Easter's child was left behind for maybe six to eight minutes. She didn't even realize because it's not her job to round up every kid. Jill Easter was really angry, concerned about her child, that something had happened to her child when nothing had. Then came the heated exchange that would launch all-out war. Kelly mentioned that the Easter's child was slow, meaning usually slow in getting in line and to be moved forward to the front. I think that Jill Easter interpreted that as some type of being slow mentally. Well, hell hath no fury like a mother's wrath. She yelled, I will get you. How do you sleep at night? I will get you. And it was so upsetting to me. The whole thing was so crazy and her eyes were so not normal. I mean, she was scary. Jill Easter's eyes, a reflection of the fury in her soul. A calculated campaign of character assassination begins. A friend warns Kelly that Jill is passing out flyers at school. She wants Kelly fired. I said, what did it say? And she said, well, it said something about you disciplining her son and that you were dangerous and that you couldn't be trusted with the kids. When the school determines that Kelly has done nothing wrong, Jill's mission escalates. She wants legal action against Kelly and enlists her husband, Kent, to help. This email details her demands. Do a background check on Kelly Peters, file a lawsuit against her personally, even get a restraining order against the PTA mom. She told the judge that I tried to kill her and that I was stalking her and harassing her. Everything that she was doing to me is actually what she said I was doing to her. I was terrified of her at this point. After months of harassing Kelly Peters, it seemed things started to calm down a bit. Perhaps the Easters had worn themselves out. But what would happen next to Kelly was simply a journey of the surreal. And it began with one phone call to the Irvine Police Department. Irvine Police. Yes, uh, hi. Uh, I was calling. Uh because uh, I just had to go over to Plaza Vista Elementary School. I saw a car driving very erratically. The man on the other end of the line names Kelly Peters as an alleged driver under the influence. I recognize that the woman is the parent volunteers for the after school program. Okay, what is your name? My name is uh, Jay. Jay? BJ. And what's your last name? Uh, Chandra Sekar. Looked like she she had some uh, like like like, uh, uh, like, uh, like pills or something. Irvine police are dispatched to Plaza Vista School. The administrator came out and said, "Kelly, the police are here for you." And I was like, my heart just like jumped. Oh God! An officer escorted Kelly out to her car. I looked at him and said, "What's going on? Do, is there a dead body in my car?" I kind of joked about it. I could see from the back window of my car, I could see right in there, I could see the drugs. Big as day. I mean, I literally was, what's going on? Why, what's going on really, you know? I said, am I being punked? 
on the back seat of Kelly's car, a bag of marijuana, a pipe, the illegal controlled substances Percocet and Vicodin. I was just nonstop, please, this is not me. You've got to listen to me. He started pulling the drugs out and putting it on top of the car. I could see that kids were getting out of the ACE classes that I was supposed to be helping volunteering. Parents were picking up their kids. Everyone was staring at me. Kelly is stunned and scared. The beloved wife, mom, and PTA president facing drug possession charges? And I started calling everybody and telling them, if I go to jail, you know, I'm going to need you to do this, and I'm going to need you to do this. And I just started making arrangements, and I was preparing for it. Kelly and her family were living an endless psychodrama. And I would crawl under a, a blanket, and I would curl up in a ball, and I would just stay there for sometimes hours. My daughter ultimately lost all her friends, and I had to move her to another school because it got so hard on her. But the astute Irvine police officer smelled a rat. He starts to at least have his suspicions that these are not Kelly's drugs, based on the fact that she's not under the influence of anything. The bag is so openly displayed, which no one would do on school grounds. And what about that phone call? Police trace it back to this Newport Beach hotel. And guess who's seen on surveillance footage right before and after the call? They were able to use surveillance video and identify uh, Kent Easter as a person who was using that telephone at the time. Next, it's the couple's cell phones that give investigators a roadmap to the scene of the crime. Based on the cell phone information we have, the Easters were out in front of Kelly's house between the hours of approximately 2 and 4 in the morning. There's constant communication between their two cell phones between that time. Their cell phones are also pinging in the area of her house at that specific time. So Kelly may have left her car open, and so it would appear that while one of them was planning the drugs, perhaps the other one was circling the neighborhood as a lookout. And then the holy grail of evidence for police and prosecutors. We have the DNA results, which has Ken Easter's DNA on some of the drugs and the marijuana pipe. The evidence was overwhelming. The day that I got the phone call that they'd been arrested, was a great day. I, I, I remember that day like it was yesterday. Both the Easters are charged. Jill takes a plea deal. Would you agree the accusations against you are pretty despicable? Kent went to trial. Orange County Deputy District Attorney Christopher Duff prosecuting the case. You're going to see how the Easters went after this poor lady over this incident, even though nothing happened to their child. By the time Kent's trial begins, he's estranged from Jill. It turns out she had been having an affair. Kent tried to blame the terrorization of Kelly Peters on his former partner in life and crime. This is a case of a trusting husband, no more, no less. But it's also a case that sadly, as we've all learned after the fact, about a dishonest wife. She gets 120 days behind bars, he 180 days, and both of them are placed on three years formal probation. Ken Easter lost his job, his bar license is suspended, Jill Easter was disbarred. Kelly Peters won a $5.7 million judgment against the Easters in a civil suit, but money doesn't heal all wounds. Truly, it's bullying as an adult. Using your power and your wealth to step on people you feel like aren't worth anything. It was so evil. I will never forgive them. Who can ignore the sad ironies of this case? Two highly educated lawyers who leave a glaring trail of their own damning evidence. And Jill Easter, who in the middle of all this was writing a book, the subject, how to commit the perfect crime.